One of the most common questions that we get as a paramotor company selling floats is what system do you choose? We currently make two versions. We make a U-float and we make a dual float. In the case in which your reserve is routed through your shoulder straps, you can use the U-float primarily. It will mount to your frame. You can also use the dual float in which you would mount that to your frame as well. In the situation where you have a front-mounted reserve or a side-mounted reserve that is not routed through your shoulder straps, you can use the dual float on your shoulder straps. As far as mounting goes and mounting options, with the dual float and the U-float, both are frame mountable and agnostic of how you have your reserve routed. So for example, if you have a front mount reserve with routing through your shoulder straps, the only float system that will not work for you is the dual float. In this case, I do not have reserve routing through my shoulder straps. The reserve routing is actually part of the carabiners at the front of my arms. So in this case, the dual float will work perfectly in a shoulder strap mounted scenario. Also note that on the sides of the frames, I do not have the ability to mount the dual float purely because of the Nirvana frame design. For you guys on Scout or any of the other higher end brands like, you know, Parajet, et cetera, um, all of the float systems are candidates for mounting on the frame as well as on the shoulder straps, depending on your harness, again, and your reserve routing. For the U-Float, you'll notice that it's designed to fit what we consider a relatively standard width frame, right? So pretty much every frame on the market has a defined width, and this is flexible enough to allow you to mount it to nearly any frame. Importantly enough, you can see that the Nirvana won't allow me to mount the U-Float, However, the dual float fits on the shoulder straps as we talked about. For those of you with uh, more traditional tube frame design, for example, Scout, Parajet, et cetera, um, the U-float is easily mountable and will disappear behind you. You almost won't even notice that it's back there um, and you know, will not obscure your flight in any way, nor will it obscure your arm movement as you're flying in a weight shift situation. Kind of an in-depth exploration of both floats. We'll start with the dual float. I'm gonna unroll it and walk you guys through what makes this thing different. So inside is a TPU-based bladder. On the outside is a core dura material. The bladder is heat welded in a machine tooling process. So there's essentially a large mold that comes down on the outsides of this bladder and seals it shut. The material itself is extremely high end. Um, we use two different types, one for the dual float and one for the U-float. There are redundant inflation systems for each design. So in this case, we have a uh, mouth inflation tube should your inflation system fail. So secondary means of redundancy. The inflation system itself is a 33 gram CO2. The external material is a Cordura, protecting all of this from normal wear and tear, right? That's genuine Cordura material. It's coated on the backside for essentially water resistance, etc. but will still allow the bobbin to pop in the case that you do hit water. At the bottom, the inflation system itself is really easy to swap out. This one is actually popped. I um, tested it inside the pool recently. Um, but at the bottom, you basically just unscrew this and there is a salt bobbin that is replaced at any time you, know, you have an accidental inflation or let's say you hit water. Self manual inflation pull and then a 33 gram CO2. is actually for deflating the top. We get that question a lot. Once it's inflated, you can actually depress to deflate and then roll this up. In the case that you have a water landing or your float system has uh, you know, experienced moisture and inflated on its own, the way that you know that this is set correctly after a recharge is you'll have a green line present here. Because this has been discharged recently in the swimming pool, uh, for testing, um, you'll notice that the salt bobbin is actually pushed all the way to the top. The cartridge has been punctured and ultimately there is no green line present here displaying that this is used and not valid. Uh, it needs to be recharged. Put that back in. Yeah. 
so for the Uflow in the situation in which you are mounting this on your frame behind you, let's walk through some of the product features that have been designed into this product. Um, you know, preface this by saying it's a little bit awkward to unroll, so bear with me for a moment. But inside is a tapered U-shaped bladder with redundant inflation system. So that means there are two inflation systems left and right, unlike any other product on the market. Along with that, the U-shaped bladder being tapered allows for most of the inflation to occur behind your head, which is the most important place for inflation to happen. Uh, those of you who have experienced a water landing or have trained in a water landing scenario will know that nine times out of 10, depending on the amount of fuel in your gas tank, you're gonna float in an insanely awkward way, preventing you from actually capturing oxygen and getting your head out of the water. So that displacement being moved further up allows you to have a better chance of not only floating your gear, which is ultimately what this product is designed for, but also yourself in a way that's not awkward and allows you to quite possibly breathe and survive that, that water landing scenario. So inside, as we unroll this, the bladder material itself is a little bit different than our U-float. Upgraded material, um, and again, you know, we've chosen a path that's unlike most others that are on the market. Walking through the bladder itself, again, a heat welded design that's tapered. You'll notice that it's significantly larger up top in this area than it is down at the bottom. Not only that, it's shaped in a V, meaning that it's not just a one dimensional design where all the displacement is at the top in kind of a bubble, right? It's tapered at the bottom as well as in that shape to help you, you know, float in the most meaningful way possible in that situation. We'll preface it by saying that both products are not necessarily a life-saving device, although they may have those attributes given the design of the product. So there is a warning label present to alert you that, you know, in that case, you, you know, kind of on your own, but ultimately saving your gear and potentially yourself is, is op an option. So the dual inflation system, um, you know, there's a left and right chamber within this bladder that's also sealed at the top here. So the redundancy occurs on both sides. Let's say you land in the water and one side doesn't inflate. You still have a high chance of rotating yourself out of that situation or at least buying yourself some time to get out of the harness in that water landing. So same inflation systems that we use for the dual float. There's a left and right. They're pinned. They are, um, you know, the same exact CO2 and water bobbin system. There's no need for multiple sizes. Um, the other companies that are on the market currently produce those because they frankly don't understand displacement math and volumes. Um, so we've created one size for both products and within that are sharing the same CO2 canister size of 33 grams. And we use genuine Leland gas canisters. They're manufactured in Japan and filled here in the United States. So two mouthpieces, left and right and then your automatic inflation system dependent on your water landing. And that CO2 bobbin actually is popped based on the salt tab discharging at the, at the bottom here. Talking through this in detail, we've got a manual pull tab for inflation on your own. If for some reason you land in water and the system does not inflate automatically, um, it's a very rare case in which that would happen, but nonetheless, you've got the redundancy there. There's a salt bobbin inside. You've got a green indicator letting you know that the system is armed and ready. There's no CO2 currently in this system, but as you can tell, it's, uh, it's still ready to go. Mouth inflation on the right and mouth inflation on the left, giving you an additional degree of redundancy. Heat welded bladder design. So this actually sits on a, a machine uh, with two halves, top and bottom. The material is laser cut and then placed into the machine. The machine then compresses and heat welds the seam. Uh, it's good for a pretty high pound per square inch rating, uh, so it's extremely, extremely safe in terms of inflation. Many of the products that are on the market now are reliant on uh, non-Cordura material or a knockoff version of that Cordura material. 
in many cases, it's also coated on the backside. And what we found is that not only is the material coming apart from a coating perspective, but also from a stitching perspective. So let's walk through what makes our product different. In the U-float design, as well as the dual float design, we use a double overlock stitching. It's very common in what you would find for a paragliding bag or a paragliding harness, where there's a lot of technical strength required. Um, you know, the material itself is genuine Cordura and it's also coated on the backside. So ultimately what you have is uh, a really high end product that's not gonna come apart either from a stitching perspective or from a coating perspective. So on the back side of the uh, dual float and the U-float, along with you know, having phenomenal stitching that's gonna last a lifetime, the stitching to hold the Velcro on in which you're attaching this to your frame or your shoulder straps is also really well done. It's gonna be very, very difficult for this to fray over time or for it to come apart. On the outside of the Velcro, we're actually using a heat cut Velcro. So on the back side, you know, where it's cut here, on the sides and where it's stitched are all fray proof in a sense, um, or we'll have a lack of fraying over time. Um, these can be wrapped around the frame and then for an additional added, val uh, added degree of security, you can use a zip tie, a small black zip tie or whatever you prefer in that regard to hold this down tight so that it really never comes up. Um, and again, there are a multitude of these throughout the design of the product, allowing you to attach to your frame based on your frame's configuration. In this case, on the, the dual float, we have a additional webbing on the outside of the Velcro. So not only is the Velcro heat cut on both sides as well as the end, but there's an additional webbing on the outside that adds a degree of longevity. At the ends where each of these are attached or sewn in with that double overlock stitching, we're also ensuring that the webbing on the back side of the other one is present so that you never have to worry about fraying over time or you know, the longevity of the product in a high wear, high use case situation. Along with that, there are a couple straps on the back side of the dual float that allow you to loop this over either the top or the bottom frame spars um, or in your, your general tube frame design in a way that allows the float to stay in position without it moving up and down. If you're mounting this on your shoulder straps, you can use one as well or both to help it from moving vertically. So left side on the left, you'll know because it opens on that side in which you want the bladder to unroll and open in that direction when it inflates. To attach on any shoulder strap uh, based harness, whether you're a paraglider or a paramotor pilot, um, it's as simple as literally just wrapping it around your shoulder straps and then Velcroing it tight. So now you've got the additional redundancy that you are looking for if you fly over water frequently whether it be inland or at the ocean. So now that I have everything on, let's assume that I've made a water landing and for some reason my bobbins didn't pop immediately and I was able to get to the manual pull tabs on my own. Um, it's as simple as pulling both of them down with a little bit of pressure. It's gonna pop the green retention clips that are in place, preventing the CO2 from being punctured easily on its own. So let's give it a try now and make sure she inflates. That simple. So these will expand. Um, they'll probably feel a little bit flat or not fully inflated at first. But keep in mind the CO2 is a lot less dense in terms of its overall temperature. And as it acclimates to the outside temperature as well as the ambient pressure, these will ultimately fill up full. Um, but at, by no means are they going to prevent you from, uh, you know, not a successful uprighting in that situation. So that is it for the U-float and the dual-float. See you.